Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. We are going to start looking at a specific type of series. Uh, the one to start with is called the geometric series. It is uh, it's the most popular series that you have in mathematics and it is very easy to study and uh, it is very very useful as well. It is an ingredient in so many other things that we do. So, let us get started with the geometric series. How does the series work? You remember the definition. Uh, we have a sequence and we take these partial sums, right. So, basically series is the sum of all the elements of a sequence in the limit. And uh, we, how we evaluate the limit is by evaluating these partial sums and then tending the limit as n tends to infinity of the partial sums Sn. So, we will do something like that here. So, in the geometric series, the underlying sequence which I am calling as An is 1 r r squared so on, ok. So, this is called geometric, it is uh, it's called a geometric progression. Uh, it gets multiplied for every uh, every element, the next element is r times the previous element. So, you have 1 here, r times 1 is r, r times r is r squared so on, ok. So, geometric because it is uh, it's opposed to arithmetic, arithmetic is you do addition, in geometric you do multiplication. So, why is that? That is for some reason, ok. So, that's, this is called the geometric sequence and then how does the series work? Series is basically sum of all these things. But to evaluate the sum of all these things, so the geometric series is actually 1 plus r plus r squared plus dot dot dot, ok. It goes on and on forever. To evaluate that sum, we have to consider the partial sums. What is the partial sum? This I will call S n. It is basically 1 plus r plus r squared and it will stop at the r, r power nth term, ok. So, this is only a finite sum. This is not an infinite sum. There is no, I am not stopping with this dot dot dot. I am stopping at r power n, ok. It turns out there is a simpler expression you can get uh, for this thing. See, I, I want to tend n to infinity here and it is not clear what happens when I tend, tend n to infinity in this big summation. But there is a simpler expression for this which will easily bring out what happens to Sn as n tends to infinity. So, let us look at that. To derive that simple expression, you have to multiply Sn by r. So, this is a very standard uh, method. You might have seen it before. I will quickly walk you through it. You multiply Sn by r, you get r plus r squared plus so on till this r power n will come from r power n minus 1. There is an r power n minus 1 gets multiplied by r, it gives you r power n. Uh, r power n itself will become r power n plus 1. And then the trick is to subtract these two things. You can do it in multiple different ways, I'm just showing you one thing. If you subtract these two, you see that r to r power n will all get cancelled, ok. So, you will get this large scale cancellation. We will be only left with 1 n minus r power n plus 1. Ok. So, S n if you pull it common out, so simply 1 minus r power n plus 1 by 1 minus r. This is the same as this expression except that all the dependence on n is sort of captured in only one term and everything else comes out very cleanly. So, here limits are easy to obtain. So, what about r power n plus 1? What happens to r power n plus 1? If absolute value of r is less than 1, r power n plus 1 tends to 0. Ok. That is a nice thing. However, if r power n plus 1, if modular absolute value of r is greater than 1, r power n plus 1 diverges to, it diverges either to no limit or to infinity, right. So, that is what happens if r is positive, uh, if r is 2 for instance, you get 2 power n plus 1 and that goes off to infinity. If r is minus 2 for instance, uh, you get this alternating thing which does not converge at all, right. So, that is, that is the, uh, that is what happens here. So, this regime is what is most interesting. Now, once again, what happens when r equals 1? I seem to not consider that r equals 1 or r equals minus 1. So, in that case, this will just become, you know, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, so on. So, Sn is just n or uh, if it is minus 1 also, it will be very simple. So, so, 1 and minus 1 are also bad cases. There is no convergence uh, to something very nice. Uh, so, it, it goes off to infinity also in that case, ok. So, 1 minus r power n plus 1, this this r power n plus 1 goes to 0 only when mod r is less than 1. That is a very safe statement you can make. So, it is mod r has to be less than 1 for this to go to 0, ok. So, that is an interesting regime that you can consider. So, using this notion of convergence for r power n plus 1, you can determine the convergence for S, Sn, right. So, you can take limits, the limits go in there and then you can make this statement. So, Sn tends to 1 by 1 minus r if mod r is less than 1, right. So, this goes to 0. And Sn diverges if mod r is equal to 1, ok. So, it becomes n, Sn becomes n if uh, mod r is equal to 1 and uh, Sn diverges if mod r is greater than 1, ok. So, it does not converge. It converges only when one uh, uh, mod r is less than 1 and it converges to 1 by 1 minus r, ok. So, this is a very, very famous summation formula in mathematics. 
uh, you learn it at a young age and here is a very simple proof for it. The series a n right a n sequence is 1 comma r comma r squared. This is a very common notation for the sequence a n. I am sorry for the series a n. The sequence a n is just curved, uh, curved brackets a n. This denotes the sequence. Summation a n this sigma this sign is sigma or summation. Summation a n is just the se series corresponding to that sequence 1 plus r plus r squared so on. And just now we saw that this series converges to 1 by 1 minus r if mod r is less than 1 and uh, it diverges if mod r is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so this is a very very form famous formula, a simple formula. Once again, uh, in any mathematics study, this is how we start, right? We start with the simple results and then we use some logic to make the results more and more and more complicated, include wider and wider things. Okay, so this particular sequence when you have 1 r r squared is very easy to find the corresponding series and the geometric series has this very famous formula for convergence. Okay, so this is geometric series. Uh, so let us see uh, some pictures, okay, just to visualize very quickly how this, we have seen this before long ago, but it is good to see that if r is 0.5, you see that a n is, uh, is dropping down as 0.5 par n and s n quickly converges to 2, right, 1 by 1 minus 0.5, that is 2. So it quickly converges to 2. On the other hand, if r is 1.05, a little above 1, you see that, uh, you know, a n uh, is sort of a constant here, slowly increasing, I mean, eventually it will increase faster. And then S n on the other hand is uh, is going off, uh, diverging to plus infinity, okay. So just a uh, visualization, stem plots are very useful visualizations for how sequences and series behave. So in, if in any doubt, if at any point you are confused, you just open up a Python notebook and draw these stem plots, uh, you will get good ideas on what is happening to the series, okay. So, <coughs> now that we know how to sum a geometric series, we can find the sum very easily. So, one moment a series is given, the first task is to identify whether or not it is geometric, as in do you always get the next term by multiplying by a constant number, right, or the ratio of these terms should be the same. That is the other way to check whether the series is geometric or not, 1 by 2 by 1 is half, 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 is again half, 1 by 8 by 1 by 4 is again half. So, you just divide the consecutive terms and then see if that is a constant. If that is a constant, then that is the common ratio and you found out that there is a geometric series. Once it is a geometric series, you can sum very easily. The first one is really, really easy. It is 1 by 1 minus half and that is 2. We just saw it in the previous slide. So, this one, there is a 4 here, but nevertheless, uh, the next term is always obtained by multiplying by 1 by 3, right? 4 into 1 by 3, 4 into 1 by 3 times 1 by 3 is 4 into 1 by 3 squared. So, how do you convert this into a standard formula? You can take 4 common outside, okay. So, this is something you can do for an infinite series also. You can pull 4 out, you get 1 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 squared, etc. And that will simply be uh, 4 times 1 by 1 minus 1 by 3 and that will give you uh, 3 by uh, 2 and 2 and 4 will cancel. You will get overall, you will get 6. I think is the answer for this, okay. You can check that. This is easy enough application. I am not writing these things down. I hope you can see it, okay. Same thing here. Uh, it starts with 2 part 10 by 3 part 10, uh, but you can pull the 2 part 10 by 3 part 10 common outside. So, maybe I should show you this. You see, uh, it does not matter where it starts, right. So, it is uh, the, the question had, uh, the question had uh, 2 part 10 by 3 part 10. So, 2 power 10 by 3 power 10 plus 2 power 11 by 3 power 11. So, it is it's not scary at all. So, you see here this multiplied by 2 by 3 gives you this, this multiplied by 2 by 3 gives you this. So, it is clearly geometric and to get it into the standard form that you know, you can simply pull, you can simply pull 2 power 10 by 3 power 10 common outside and you will get 1 by 2 by 3 plus 2 by 3 whole squared plus so on. And now you know how to sum this, right? So, 3 part 10. And this 2 by 3 is less than 1. So, this is also important. So, you get 1 by 1 minus 2 by 3. So, that is just 2 part 10 by 3 part 10 times uh, 1 by 1 minus 2 by 3 is 3. So, you get 2 part 10 by 3 power 9. Notice the small change in the exponent. These kind of things happen. Okay, so that's uh, that's summation, and then if you if you look here, the next question is one plus two plus two squared. 
This is again geometric, but then guess what? This ratio is greater than 1. So, this is going to diverge. Okay, so you can easily say that this will go to infinity. In fact, it's all positive, so it will go to infinity. So, this one is uh, 4 power 5 by 3 power 5 again geometric, but the common ratio R is 4 by 3, and that 4 by 3 is greater than 1. So, this is also going to go off to uh, plus infinity. Okay, so given a series like this, you have to identify whether it's geometric or not, and then once you identify it's geometric, you can uh, you can you know adjust it into a known form if r is less than one it converges if r is greater than or equal to one it diverges okay but this is not the only thing you can do with geometric series okay so now uh, we start you know these are minor modifications you might argue but it's still basically geometric but you can use the geometric series convergence and find out convergence for other series okay so this is very very powerful convergence and divergence for other series okay this is an extremely powerful idea and this is called the comparison test okay so i will not prove this comparison test for you it's uh, it's a little bit of writing but it's it's sort of obvious so i want you to just think about it and be happy about this result okay so now uh, for comparison you need two things right so in this case we have two series one series is summation cn the other series is summation an so you have the series an and the series cn okay but these two satisfy a condition. Okay, what is the condition? Absolute value of a n, the nth term, is upper bounded by c n. Okay, so c n is always above absolute value of a n. Okay, so that's important. And then what happens? C n converges. Okay, so if, if this condition is satisfied for all n above some value, in fact, this condition need not be satisfied for every single value of n. The first few n can be, you know, first few values can be anything, it doesn't really matter. After some time, this has to be sure, true, okay. And that's good enough for us. Because first few always adds up to something finite, we don't, we don't care about it. Only the uh, large part in the tail adds up to infinity in some sense, infinite number of values in some sense. So, this is what's important. So, most of these results will have this for all n above some value type of flavor. But anyway, we can think of this as just, <coughs> you know, series a n being dominated by absolutely dominated by you know the series cn and cn converges okay so you have a series and it converges and you have another series whose absolute value is always below the value of this series so clearly this an should also converge right it's sort of an intuitive result and you can make this intu intu intuition rigorous by writing down careful epsilon delta type arguments so i'm not i'm not doing that technical part here but you can see intuitively that this should be true okay the opposite sort of result is also true. So, supposing uh, you have a, you have again two sequences a n and d n and this d n guy this this a n is above d n ok. So, d n is below a n in some sense and the d n itself diverges ok. So, there is a sequence first it is all positive this positive thing is important if it goes negative uh, it is a little bit confusing and we are not going to see negative uh, series uh, that much in this uh, lectures and uh, in this week at least. Okay. So, d n is a c series and it diverges, it is positive and then there is this a n which is above it in every term. Okay. Of course, above some value, but in every term it is above it. In that case, a n should also diverge. right? It cannot happen that a n suddenly converges, it is above it. No? So, it is sort of like both these results are sort of similar in some sense and this forms the basis of comparison test. So, this allows you once again to start with a simple series convergence result like the geometric series we have and then use it as an ingredient to decide about convergence of other series. Okay, what a powerful idea, right? Again and again, the same thing is done in math all the time. You start with something simple and then you use these kind of ideas to build it into something more complicated. So, let me show you a couple of easy examples. <coughs> the first example is this guy, right? 1 by 2 into 3 plus 1 by 2 into 3 into 4 plus 1 by 2 into 3 into 4 into 5, etc. On the face of it, this is not geometric. Why is that? So, you have to multiply this by 1 by 4 to get this one. You have to multiply this by 1 by 5 to get this term. So, it is not constant factor. But then there is a sense that this series should also converge and that comes from the comparison test. How do you do this? So, let me just show you. So, if you notice here 1 by this is the sequence we are interested in 1 by 2 into 1 by 3 into 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2 into 1 by 3 into 1 by 4 into 1 by 5 plus so on. Here is another sequence. So, this is my sequence a n. Here is another sequence c n for you. I am going to take half, keep it as it is and then replace this 1 by 3 by half. 
and then this half I will keep as it is and replace this 1 by 3 by half, replace this 1 by 4 plus half and keep this half as it is and replace 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5 with half, okay. So, notice here that every term this guy, see right, this term is less than or equal to this term. This term is less than or equal to this term. Why? Because 1 by 3 is less than 1 by 2, 1 by 4 is less than 1 by 2, 1 by 3 is less than 1 by 2. So, these products are smaller than 1 by 2 into 1 by 2, 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 and so on. So, likewise this is also lesser. So, go back to our comparison test. You have this a n being this uh, new unknown sequence and c n is some other sequence and it is term by term you know it, it dominates a n right. It is it's, it's upper bounds a n's term. And then what do I know about this sequence? This is nothing but half squared plus half cubed plus half power 4 and this converges, right? So, this is geometric. Why does it converge? Because it's geometric and common ratio is less than half. So, you notice here how a non-geometric sequence you could find convergence for by using this uh, geometric series as the dominated thing, okay? Of course, this does not tell you what the value of this series is. It does not tell you what it converges to. Okay, so, this converges, converges to what? I cannot find to what yet with this comparison test. Maybe I need other techniques for it. Maybe we can do it differently, but uh, for now, uh, we know that this converges. Okay, so it converges for sure. Okay, let me write it. Converges for sure, uh, but equal to what? Uh, it cannot be determined by the comparison test. You need other techniques for it. But comparison test, notice how it allows you to build on a simple result that you know and uh, come up with something else, okay. So, here is another example. Uh, I am not going to write down here at this time, but in this example is 1.1 plus 1.01 plus 1.001 plus 1.0001 so on, okay. Once again, what is the uh, series that is going to be below this and diverge? You can see quite easily, right? So, if you put 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus so on, that is a geometric sequence, right? Trivial sequence and that diverges and this sequence is above it term by term. So, this also will diverge, okay? So, this maybe it is a trivial example, but maybe the first one you saw is a more interesting example on deciding this. This idea of a comparison test is a powerful, powerful idea. We are going to use this in the later lectures to decide on convergence and divergence of a very, very interesting series as we go forward. Thank you very much.